Hey everyone, Daredevil here, and happy Halloween. And if it's not Halloween, well, I'm a blind man who dressed himself this morning. So I took to my social media and asked you guys to ask me questions. I got this one question that kind of prompted me to make its own video. And someone who was blind wanted to get into video making, and they wanted to know exactly what do I use, how do I use a camera, and what is the most accessible part of filmmaking? So let's let's dive into that. Since I was eight years old, I've been sort of developing my own craft and technique when it comes to filmmaking to make it more accessible for myself. Today I'm gonna to share with you guys a little bit of what I've learned over the years and how to maybe approach filmmaking for the first time or maybe you just wanna make YouTube videos. So let me just start by saying that gear does matter. What I mean by that is making sure that the gear is accessible and comfortable for you to use. Not so much picture quality, not so much all the features that are gonna be jam packed into a cinema camera, but you just wanna make sure that you are comfortable with the device that you're using to create and to tell your stories. As you may or may not be able to see down here, I have an array of cameras that all do the same thing, but do things a little bit differently. Starting from the right, we have the Blackmagic cinema camera, then the Blackmagic pocket camera, the Canon T6i, the Canon XC10, the Canon G7X, and the iPhone. This is what I'm familiar with. In terms of things that have been accessible to me, these cameras, for different reasons, all have been, to an extent, accessible. Some features I look for right off the bat in a camera is being able to magnify, focus peaking, and autofocus. Blackmagic Cinema Camera itself, it's pretty accessible from the point that the UI is honestly one of the easiest I've ever used, especially for a professional camera. It has a five inch touchscreen that has very simplistic menu layouts. Even for a professional camera like this, it allows you to just easily go through and change your settings, sliders, all that. It's something that you'd find maybe on a app for a smartphone. Obviously being a professional camcorder, this camera has amazing picture quality. The dynamic range is quite incredible, but it's not gonna be for everyone. The ergonomic shape is not the most comfortable, it's not the most portable, and the battery, it's, it's internal. Now Blackmagic has had more recent cameras come out that use external batteries, but this one by itself definitely isn't the, the easiest. And after a couple years of use, you're gonna find that the battery only lasts about 20 to 30 minutes. Shortly after the Blackmagic Cinema camera came out though, they announced the Blackmagic Pocket Camera. And this guy, it's quite portable. It literally will fit in a pocket minus the cage that's currently on it. This also has the same user interface as the Blackmagic Cinema camera. And at first you might think that's a great thing because I love that user interface, but this doesn't have a touchscreen. And that UI is built for touchscreen. So using a D-pad to sort of navigate all these menus is not the easiest thing. A pro of this camera is though, it does offer focus peaking and that's something that the Blackmagic Cinema also offers. Focus peaking is when the camera will actually highlight what's in focus on the screen. It's not bad and it actually really helps me know what's in focus. The Blackmagics also do let you zoom in on your footage. However, it's a static zoom in. It's just double tap and you get a fixed zoom in. Best feature, but it's something. Up next is the Canon T6i. Much of the Blackmagics, this does let you actually take off the lens and swap it for something maybe more appropriate for the scene. DSLRs like the Canon T6i are very popular amongst online creators and it allows you to actually have a flip out screen. Most models will. From a distance, I personally cannot see what's on the screen, so when I'm vlogging like this, it's kind of useless to me. DSLRs are good cameras, but you gotta keep in mind that they're picture first, video second. So if you're looking for a camera that shoots great pictures, grab this. It might be good for starters, but moving forward, you might want to look elsewhere. Up next is the Canon XC10. This is my personal favorite camera at the moment. This is more of a professional camcorder, but it looks like a DSLR. This is one of Canon's first 4K camcorders. When it comes to video, I'm all about the story content and the editing. A camera like this is making that more accessible. Now this camera has a fixed lens, so it's not removable, but the lens on it is about a 24 to 240 millimeter, which makes it optimal for like all kinds of situations. Beyond that, it offers focus peaking, something that the Canon DSLRs don't currently offer. Beyond that, I can use the magnifier to zoom in and use the joystick on it to move around the screen so that I can focus exactly where I need to zoom in on. The autofocus is also very quick and it has face detection. So when I'm doing a journalistic piece or documentary, it's very quick to notice the faces first. 
and of course that's customizable. If you're also not a fan of navigating menus with joysticks, you can also use the touch screen. It also has this optional viewfinder. When there's too much sun outside and I just need to look in here and have a nice clear view of what it is I'm trying to see. Do keep in mind though that this camera does not flip out the screen similar to the DSLRs. If you haven't used a DSLR or a camera system before, I don't recommend this camera. It's a lot to sort of jump into, but if you're gonna try and get into more professional cameras like the C100 or C300, this might be a good start. It's a, it's a good in between the DSLR and pro camera. This is the G7X from Canon, and it's a great point and shoot. Shoots great video, shoots great pictures, but again, it's not gonna be on the same power of a DSLR. No, my camera does not have a head of hair. It's actually got a windscreen. It's a little Velcro uh, piece of hair, I guess, uh, that, that goes over the microphone. This way, when I'm outside, I can vlog and not have to worry about wind too much. Similar to the XC10, it has a fixed lens. You've seen these before. Probably may have had these if you grew up with cameras in the 2000s. These were the popular cameras before the DSLR craze. It has fast autofocus and face detection, so it's able to sort of latch on to subjects that you probably want to focus on pretty quickly. What's nice is the screen does flip the other way. So if you do want to shoot and vlog, Totally possible. This is very much an ideal camera for those who want to get started with YouTube. It can be prompted onto a tripod and you can see yourself. If I was to recommend a dedicated camera for beginners, I'd say the Canon G7X or another point and shoot that shoots HD video at least is a good way to start. But lastly, if you really want to get started with video, I recommend your smartphone. If you don't have a smartphone, well, okay, look into a camera or a smartphone. But the iPhone is honestly one of the most accessible cameras out there. If you have an iPhone 8, 7, or 10 and you upload video to YouTube, people probably aren't even gonna guess that you're shooting on a smartphone. 70% of blind smartphone users actually use an iPhone. So if you use VoiceOver to navigate your phone, you can use the camera app. VoiceOver is fully accessible when you're taking pictures or even video. I do recommend that you have headphones in, so that way the microphone is not picking up on the VoiceOver sound. When I'm in the camera app, VoiceOver will actually tell me when there's a face in view, if that face is smiling, how many people are there, what part of the camera they're on. All you have to do is navigate around the camera app and it'll tell you the information. So there's nothing stopping you from creating videos. You know, a smartphone will do the job and it will do the job really well. Now there is gear out there to customize and, and make filming on your iPhone more accessible and optimal. There's tripod mounts, there's microphones, even better lights. If you're not totally satisfied with the lens and the camera on the phone, well, there's actually lenses that you can put on, such as wide angle, fisheye, if you want to get more of a macro or zoom lens, they exist. I recommend looking at the Ollie Clip or Moments lens if you're looking for something like that for your iPhone. And with that, these are the cameras that I use for filmmaking. More specifically, I use the XC10, the G7X, and the iPhone these days. But again, these have all worked for me in the past. If you're looking for editors, I've used iMovie and Final Cut Pro, which work just fine with voiceover. So if you want to get into editing and you're blind or visually impaired, go for it. But if you don't have a Mac, um, Windows as a narrator. The thing is filmmaking is something that takes time to, to learn and, and to only get better at. You know, you might not get it the first time, you might not get it the hundredth time, but it's all about progression. And there's no such thing as perfection in my eyes. It's also probably because I'm blind. But for those wondering where I got this jacket, fjackets.com, link will be in the description down below. So I wanna hear from you. Let me know down below in the comments what was your first camera? Was it accessible to you? Was it not? Is that why you, maybe you're on the market looking for a new camera or, or why you want to know what a blind guy thinks about filmmaking? Holler down below. And with that, have a happy and safe Halloween. And if it's not Halloween, well... Sorry. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to check out the video that's generated just for you on screen. And if you want to support me and what I do, check out my Patreon down below. Thank you guys, and I will hear you next time. Bye.